Welcome back to the Space Shed. I am John John Spooner, Director of Human Space Flight Operations here at the Unlimited Space Agency. Welcome back to the Space Shed, UNSA's headquarters and my lockdown home. As many of you already know, while we are in lockdown and with the schools closed, we are at UNSA trying to help relieve the boredom, keep your brains working and hopefully keep it all fun by running our astronaut training program, the Astro Science Challenge. Uh, now, if you're here, then that's because you probably already signed up. Well done. Uh, and if you haven't already signed up, then stop breaking my heart and go over to astrosciencechallenge.com where you can see all of the information that you need about how, when and what to do on this astronaut training program. There are now more than 5,000 of you signed up and taking part, which is amazing. We're so happy and proud that you are joining us. We're also really enjoying seeing some of the work that you are sending into us. In fact, I would like to just share a few bits of work that you've been sending into us. This um, is Cadet George. Hello, Cadet George. Uh, check out George's top. That is sick. So much space going on there. Uh, George has been, uh, it's from Ipswich, been doing, it's only age five, it's been doing some brilliant research into life on board the International Space Station. This is a really great example that it is never too young to start training for space. We've also had this sent in from Cadet Scarlett. Scarlett is aged nine, has made these awesome presentations about the solar system, the ISS. Thank you for sending them in, Scarlett. Really fabulous work there. This is from Team Linda, Linda and Cadet Luke, who've come up with this brilliant way of remembering the order of the planets. Um, my very exciting mission, joining Space Challenge answer now. Uh, we are genuinely going to have to start using that ourselves. And this from the Sheffield area on the planet Earth. This is Agents Cadet, sorry, Cadets Felix and Wilfred, who have been learning all about the International Space Station this week. Awesome work, boys. Um, uh, thank you so much for sending that stuff in. It is a genuine pleasure to see it all. Keep it coming in. You can uh, send work to us uh, on any of the socials. We are at Unspace Agency. Over there, no, over there, John. At Unspace Agency on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Or if you are a little more traditional than that, you can send us an email. We are hello at unspaceagency.earth. Um, now, on Monday, uh, we released our first mission, Spaceship Earth, which we've made in collaboration with our brilliant friends at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. Hopefully you've all already seen the mission briefing video that came out on Monday. It's on this channel. And in a few minutes, I am going to be joined by uh, the excellent Liz Avery, our friend from the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. She is an astronomer there. She's going to be answering some questions that you've been sending in about this week's mission and just talking a little bit about her work. But before then... Someone's missing, aren't they? Yes. It is that time to bring in my lockdown cadet, my best friend, my co-host, and wannabe astronaut, would you please welcome to the Space Shed, Mini John. Get up here, MJ, come on. Yes, MJ. <coughs> do you have to do that? Hi, MJ. <coughs> Hi, how are you feeling today? <coughs> Yeah, well, that's not as excited as I was hoping you were going to be. Uh, I'm pretty... <coughs> oh, OK, yeah, yeah, me too. I'm really excited, yeah. Uh, we've got some really cool guests that are coming in this week. Uh, in a minute, your friend Liz from the Royal Observatory is going to be here. <coughs> I know, right? She is. She's brilliant. And on Friday this week, we are, we're frankly, a bit giddy, or I am at least, we will be wel welcoming our favourite astronaut, Samantha Cristoforetti. <coughs> European Space Age. Um, well, yeah. No, of course. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> of course, Tim. Tim's our favourite astronaut. It's just that Samantha is our... Don't other... touch that, John. Sorry, Tim. It's like he's watching all the time. Um, it's just uh, Samantha is our other favourite astronaut, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 look, just don't, don't tell him that I said that about... Samantha. Okay, thanks very much. Should we, uh, should we move on? Okay, uh, should we do your top tips for lockdown, MJ? 
<laughs> okay, so some of you sent in your top tips for lockdown. Uh, thank you very much for that. For example, team leader Shona in Scotland says, our top tip for lockdown is do lots of Lego and chill out, which you can't really argue <gasps> with. No, I, I agree. Um, and I particularly loved this from, uh, this is from Cadet Effie. Uh, and there's a lot to love about this uh, little piece of work that Cadet Effie has done, but I was particularly loving. Um, go and have some fun and laughter. Just remember to relax, even when you are working, which, I mean, learning should be fun. Right? <coughs> yeah, I agree. OK, so MJ, are you ready? <coughs> Brilliant. OK, so uh, welcome to the Space Shed and today's edition of... <coughs> MJ's top tips for lockdown. Okay, uh, so in our first show, MJ, your top tip for lockdown was to eat huh? more <laughs> biscuits. Yeah, eat more biscuits. Well done. And we agreed that was fine. That was not a bad thing uh, to do in lockdown, eat more biscuits. But we also agreed that you would have another little think and maybe come up with something just a little bit more challenging uh, in case any of our cadets out there wanted to stretch themselves, yeah? So have you had a little think about that? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so MJ, what is today's top tip for lockdown? <laughs> learn another language. Learn another language. Okay, I mean that is you've gone from one end of the spectrum with eat more biscuits <laughs> to, yeah, to learn another language. Uh, have you been learning another language? <laughs> Ewokies. <laughs> what? As in what the Ewoks speak in Star Wars? <laughs> Oh, well, okay, okay, then we'll go. Then say something, say something in Ewok. <laughs> oh, uh, well, uh, that is actually really good. Um, say something else. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's what you said before. Say something else in Ewokies. <laughs> that's, um, that it's, it's, it's all you know, isn't it? Okay, well, that's a good start. I mean, I'm not knocking it. That's great, learning another language. And uh, I'm sure that's going to stand you in great stead further in your life and career when you need to be speaking Ewok. Uh, I mean, who knows? Uh, so thanks very much for that, MJ. Yeah, uh, maybe you've got some top tips for lockdown that you could share with us. Maybe you know another phrase in Ewok that isn't that one one that he knows um send them in to us we're at unspace agency like i say on all of the socials we'd love to get your top tips for lockdown or any phrases that you know in ewok or you can email us hello at unspaceagency.earth because i'm sure there's loads of you with tactics out there for surviving lockdown having to spend all day every day with your annoying sisters and brothers and parents so send them in thanks very much and join us again for another edition of mj's top tips for lockdown <laughs> Okay, uh, that was really good. Uh, are you going to learn some more? Yeah, it's, it's not even really showing off now, is it? It's just saying the same thing. And it's quite tiresome. So let's just... And don't do that. I've, I'm so sorry. Right, let's just move on, shall we? And uh, shall we get our special guest for today in? Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, you should all be doing Mission One, Spaceship Earth, that we made in collaboration with our brilliant friends at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, and here to give you her top tips on this mission and to answer your questions. Would you please give it up for the wonderful Liz Avery from the Royal Observatory? Yeah. Hiya, Hello. Liz. Hiya, Liz. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, yeah, really good. Uh, this has all gone remarkably well so far. So, um, <laughs> oh, Mini John says hello. Hi, hello. Mini John. Oh, and he says he really likes your glasses as well. Thanks, mate. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you have worked really closely with us uh, making this mission, uh, Spaceship Earth, uh, yeah. because you're an astronomer at the Royal Observatory. I am. Maybe, I mean, I mean, Mini John, not me, but obviously Mini John would like to know, what is an astronomer? What, do, what, what does an astronomer <laughs> do, Liz? Well, so as astronomers, we are very curious people. So we ask a lot of questions about the world around us, but actually beyond Earth. So we ask a lot of questions about space and what's out there how our solar system behaves, how beyond our solar system behaves. Uh, and we are just, yeah, really, really want to find out more about it and understand how it all works. Sounds really cool. Um, yeah, it is. It's good. Oh, Mini John was just asking me, I mean, if he wanted to become an astronomer, 
Yeah. How, how would he do that? So, I mean, there's lots of different routes into it. Um, for me, I really liked science at school and uh, I quite like maths as well. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and I also liked making things too. Uh, and I liked putting all those things together. And then I went on to do my GCSEs and A-levels and then I went to university. Um, and then I, yeah, it kind of went from there really and then ended up at the Royal Observatory. Which so is, there, but there's lots of different routes in. But yeah, yeah that's just mine. That's yours. Um, but you, the Royal Observatory, I mean, I'm not just saying this. It is, I grew up in London and it's one of my favourite places as a kid, certainly, and still to go and visit because you've got the amazing park. Um, you nah. can take the foot tunnel if you're coming from uh, the north of the river. So I grew up on the north side and um, you take the foot tunnel under, which is a really cool walk over. You, you can get the boat if you come from further down yeah. south. You can take the boat up the river. You've got the park. And then at the top of the park, there's this extraordinary building. Tell us a little bit about what the Royal Observatory does because when the lockdown lives, I'm going to tell everyone, you, if you get the opportunity, if you live in London <laughs> or can get to London, go to the Royal Observatory. What do you do at the Royal Observatory, Liz? Oh, my gosh, so much. Um, so we're a museum, um, but we also have some amazing telescopes that we use as well. So we've got a, a Victorian telescope that works. Uh, that we use to look at the planets um, and the night sky. And then we've actually got um, another telescope as well, which is really new and it's, oh, it is super snazzy. It is top, a top class. Yeah, it really is. You know, it's a great one. And we can use that to look at so much more. Um, more to do, that one's more to do with kind of astronomy photography. So we can take the most amazing images of space with it. And then, of course, we've got things like education programs, events, courses. We do live streams. We do oh, we do all sorts of stuff. If, you, if you're interested, I would check out our website because we've got tons of stuff going on. Minnie even John in is so excited just listening to you talking <laughs> about it. Uh, just tell us quickly, what is, what, is the, what is the website address? What's the... Um, if, you, if you put us into a search engine, just Royal Museums Greenwich and then go to the Royal Observatory or just Royal Observatory Greenwich, you'll find us. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so go if you can when we're allowed to go back out into the out of the space shed again. Um, but you were saying you've got telescopes there, and one of our cadets has sent in a question saying, um, Erica, who's age seven, asked she, she'd like to know some ways to get to know about stars when you can't get to them. And I wonder if is, telescopes would be one of those ways, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's actually a lot that we can find out about stars just by looking at them. Um, we can actually even find out what they're made of just by observing them or observing the light that comes from them. It's a really amazing technique called spectroscopy. Um, and how it works is the light coming from a star, we can analyze it. And every single element that's inside that star, so things like oxygen, hydrogen, helium, they'll have a really distinct um, and individual, kind of like a, a fingerprint within that light. And we can look at all those different fingerprints together and work out what elements are inside that star and what it's made of. So it's pretty amazing stuff. And you, yeah, you do that with really specialized telescopes. That yeah. is pretty amazing. I know, Being yeah. A, uh, which Banana. maybe leads us into another question we've got from, um, this is from team leader Linda and their cadet Luke. They were wondering, I mean, assuming you look through those telescopes sometimes, what is yeah. the furthest away <laughs> planet that you have seen through those telescopes? Hmm. So for me, I think probably Saturn, actually, because some of the programs that we do through those telescopes are quite specific and we like to look for nice big targets. Um, yeah, so probably Saturn. Um, which looks amazing because you can see the rings, you can see the, the bands as well. It just looks amazing when you that, see it through a telescope. That is cool. Yeah. Are there ways that, because this is a good time of year, you know, this is time of year in the UK where the skies are a bit clearer generally. So at night time, if you can stay up late enough to yeah. it's gone dark, so obviously the summer days are longer, what could we be looking out for and how could we do that? Because I think you can use like binoculars if you've got them at home. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you definitely can. So binoculars are great, actually, um, or a telescope. But to be honest, you you can see so much just with your eyes. You don't really need any specialist equipment to go stargazing. Um, yeah, May is a really good month stargazing wise. There's lots to look for. So tomorrow we're going to have a full moon. 
Um, you can also see the International Space Station uh, coming over as well. Although I did check for May and it's very late at night or very early in the morning. There were some but, really good ones last month, some really uh, long, yeah, bright yeah. ones. But yeah, it's not great yeah. this month. Yeah, but I mean, you, you still will be able to see it. Um, and then there's also some planets that you can see at the moment as well. So you'll be able to see Jupiter, uh, Saturn and Mars as well. Um, I think if if you're interested, then I would check out our blog and our um, podcast that we've got uh, because it can kind of talk you through it. But I guess my top tip for stargazing, whatever time of the year it is, I would say to look for circumpolar constellations. I'm so, sorry, look for what? Yeah, so there are 88 official constellations, but there are some of those constellations that night sky the entire year through they're there all the time which makes them perfect to help you find your bearings and help you navigate the night sky and they are the circumpolar constellations so things like ursa major the great bear ursa minor the little bear um cassiopeia as well you can use and then there's always polaris which is the north star which is great to help you find your bearings and where north is so it at first, I would say go out and have a little look for those because they're nice and easy to spot on a clear night. And then once you've got those, you're sorted. Everything else will be so easy to find in comparison. So, And if, and if you want a bit of help doing that, like Liz says, go to the Royal Observatory website, check out their podcast, um, and that will help you to look up. But basically, just go outside and look up. The sky, I'm looking out of my window now, and the sky is beautifully clear. Obviously, it's daytime. Yeah. But I am really excited about seeing it. You can see the, the moon really clearly in the sky at the moment. There is a planet, I think, that is right next to the moon, just a little bit to the right of the moon at the moment, um, that's very, very bright. Which planet's that? So, hmm. Spot quiz. <laughs> <laughs> it de I'm not sure because it depends what kind of time you're looking at it. Yeah, of course. Um, but the ones that are up at the moment, they are, they are pretty, yeah, fairly bright and you should be able to see those, so... Yeah, I'd, I'd have a little look and see if you can see any of those. OK, cool. And um, Agent Moonrock, uh, who is uh, already an agent, she's already done the um, Astro Science Challenge once and is doing it again. Uh, she's amazing. I think you've met is Annabelle. Have, yeah, yeah, she's great. She is, she's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and uh, she wanted to know for you, what is your favourite thing that you've seen through a telescope? So you know that you've seen Saturn and that's the furthest planet. What's your favourite thing? Mm -hmm. I think my favourite is probably Jupiter. I've got a bit of a soft spot for Jupiter because it's, I mean, it's a super snazzy looking planet, isn't it? Because with all those different bands and then you've got the great red spot and then you can even see some of the Jupiter's moons as well, uh, the Galilean moons, and it just looks amazing. That's so, so cool. And you can see that clearly yeah. through. Yeah. Do you need a massive telescope like you've got to do that? You, not a massive one, no, no. You, I think you can even see Jupiter with um, binoculars, actually, as well. So, yeah, you know, you'd be able to see it. Wow, that's cool. I'm looking forward to getting out tonight. Yeah. Um, Joshua, who's age 11, would like to know, how do you measure the distance between us and other planets or stars? So I'm assuming this is something to do with some of the sums he's maybe doing on this week's mission. I see. Yeah, so a good, really good question. Um so one of the first people to have a look at this was Kepler, who tried to look at how the planets go around the sun to try and work out distances. Kind of made some progress, but then it was Cassini who came after Kepler and kind of built on that work that really made some proper meaty progress with it, uh, looked at the distance to Mars and used something called parallax. So if you look at something that's directly in front of you and covered it up with your thumb, and then shut one eye and then shut the other eye, you'll see that your thumb jumps. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. That distance that it jumps is parallax. And we can use that to look at things in space with two different telescopes on Earth in different places. If we know the distance between them and we know the parallax, we can use some pretty amazing maths using the angles to work out how far away that thing is. <laughs> amazing right? <laughs> it is amazing but this I is and this is uh, one of the applications so you know i know everyone tells you know study at school and maths is but this is a really great example of why maths is useful and w one of its applications if you want to become an astronomer yeah, yeah. and find out stuff about planets do the maths right definitely maths is a maths is a really beautiful subject 
Uh, and it's incredibly useful, <laughs> not just in astronomy, just in life. But it is. it is very useful in astronomy. So I'm wondering if so uh, this is from Leo. Uh, Leo is nine. Uh, yeah. And Leo wants to know what is dark matter? I'm assuming you might need some maths to understand that, but Liz, what's dark matter? Oh, Leo, dark matter is a big topic. So, well, we need to start with dark matter. Okay, so if we think about galaxies in our universe and how they move, they spin really, really, really quickly, unexpectedly quickly. Um, and scientists are confused about why they can spin that fast and not just rip apart because the, the stuff that we know about that's in them shouldn't make enough gravity to be able to keep them together in one chunk. So they think that there must be something else going on. There must be something else adding matter, which would make some more gravity, which would keep everything nice and tight together so that they can spin at that speed and keep their shape. And that mystery thing, they think, is dark matter. It's a very big topic and it's really unknown as well. So if it is something that you're interested in and you fancy going into science later on in life, it's a great subject and a great um, like section of science to get into because you can find out so much that we ah. don't know. Oh, that was Mini John just saying he thought you did a really good job of describing what dark matter is there. Um, Thanks, Mini John. <laughs> I, I'd just like to... Uh, recommend as well we have a podcast unlimited space age have a podcast called live from the space shed like we are here but it's a podcast and one of those podcasts if you look it up is from dr alex amon who specializes in dark matter and dark energy uh, she does a brilliant job of describing it's about like a half hour podcast live from the space shed with dr alex amon check that out leo because uh, mm -hmm. that will go into some more detail uh, yeah but it's a there's lots topic. of detail to be had <laughs> um now, we are doing your mission this week, Spaceship Earth. Um, what yeah. are your top tips? There's some really cool activities that people can do in here. It's like researching about the ISS and about our solar system, the planets. What are your top tips for people that are doing this mission this week? Hmm. Well, I would say if you start off with planet Earth and then maybe work your way out, uh, that might be a good way to go about it. So you could work your way out and go in towards the sun and check out what's there and the planets and, you know, how they are kind of made and how they're formed and what they're like to visit potentially. And then you can go the other way as well out of the solar system and see what those planets are like too. But yeah, I would start on Earth and then just work your way out and see what you find. Nice. Okay. Uh, what's your favourite planet, Liz? <sighs> Hmm. I reckon, oh, it's really difficult. I reckon maybe Venus, you know, because mm. it's, it's very, very, very hot. Uh, and you could cook a pizza on the surface <laughs> of Venus without the pizza oven. Well, you'd cook, and, um, you'd cook yourself as well, wouldn't you? You would, you would. But I, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a big pizza fan, so I'm kind of into that fact. <laughs> Venus is my favourite because I love pizza. Love it. That yeah. is an astronomer. <laughs> It's an astronomer's favourite planet because pizza. Um, yeah. And also I was going to say as well, again, sort of uh, with the podcast that we do, we have another brilliant episode with uh, an amazing woman called Abby Hutty, who was the lead engineer on the uh, Rosalind Franklin rover that sadly isn't flying to Mars this summer, but will at some stage. Um, and we talk a lot about Mars there because mine and Minnie John's favourite planet is Mars, isn't it, Emily? Uh -huh. Yeah, we like Mars a lot. That's where we're going to go in 2035. That's our plan. Um, oh, nice. Now, Good choice. We're asking, uh, oh, I'll tell you what, because um, you're our first sort of expert guest in live from the space shed. So thank you. Um, right. And I know that as part of your job, you've actually met quite a lot of astronauts. Uh, have. as part of that which is really super cool we've got an astronaut coming in on friday samantha christopheretti who you've already met yeah i have she's um, amazing she is amazing she is absolutely one of my favorites apart from tim of course don't touch that of course John. yes yeah. oh, sorry tim um <laughs> so uh if we're going to run a competition i'm going to talk about it in a little bit um asking people to get their questions in because astronauts get asked a lot of the same questions yeah, right they do um, yeah what would if you had the opportunity to ask samantha any question now having met her once before what would you ask her hmm. i think i'd want to know what she missed the most when she was on the international space station but not her friends and family because i think you know you would miss those right but things like stuff from her everyday life 
things that she would use every day, like her favorite coffee mug or a pair of slippers or, you know, her favorite jumper or something that what did she miss the most from everyday life that she just didn't have with her? That's a really cute question. I think particularly because it's like you say, not friends or families. The idea, yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining Samantha sat at home in her slippers now. I'm wondering yeah. if they're pink and fluffy or, you know, Probably got stars on them, maybe. Dinosaurs. Um, yeah. <laughs> and finally, we're asking everyone, I'll ask Samantha that on Friday. Um, we're oh, asking right. everyone, uh, because we're in lockdown at the moment, we can't go out. You're clearly at home. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you've got a young, uh, you've got you've got a little one there. They're three? Uh, so he's about 18 months, yeah. Sorry. Only little. 18 months. So well done. <laughs> really? Big up all the mums and parents that are at home at the moment trying to work and also looking after um, yeah. and homeschooling uh, their children. Yeah. Take it easy on yourselves. That's what we're saying. Keep it light. Keep it yeah. fun. Um, but what are your top tips for lockdown? Well, so, I, yeah, I've got my little boy. I've also got a very energetic, uh, very large cat both of which need quite a lot of entertaining. So we've been playing a lot uh, and we've been playing a lot in the garden as well. And just, yeah, just trying to have some fun together because it's, it's, you know, lockdown's really tough, but it's quite nice to have a lot of time together. So yeah, we've just been playing and having fun. Okay, cool. Play and have fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love that the cat needs so much attention. That's, oh yeah <laughs> that's not what cats are supposed to do um, she just loves to play so yeah. yeah well look how can we stay in touch with you and the royal observer if we have if anyone else has questions beyond this mm -hmm. they can get in touch with you right and with the royal um, Observatory. Yes. yeah so uh our social media channels uh we're on all of those especially twitter and we're doing something at the moment called astronomy um where we're doing different things every day uh, are coming out through our Twitter feed so you can find out all sorts of different things about astronomy and space science. Um, so yeah, give us a shout on there or just go through our website as well and you'll find us there too. That's really yeah. cool. So look up Liz Avery as well as the Royal Observatory on any of those <laughs> uh, channels and do go when you can. Uh, we need to be supporting all of these organisations. It's tough times for all of us, I know, but once we can get back into the world, buy a ticket, go to the Royal Observatory. It is an awesome, awesome place if you can make the trip. Um, Liz, thank you so much for taking the time today, for working with us on the Astro Science Challenge and for and for joining me and Minnie John in the space shed today. <laughs> MJ is so pleased that you were here. Um, no. We will speak again. And yeah, thank you very much. Good. Big up to Liz Avery, everybody. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so MJ, I thought that went really well. Yeah. OK. Um, thanks, Liz. That was wonderful. And on Friday, we are going to be joined, as I keep saying, by an actual astronaut from the international, sorry, from the European Space Agency. That is this brilliant woman, Samantha Cristoforetti. Now, Samantha spent 200 days on the International Space Station in 2015 on her Futura mission. Now, for some of it, she even wore a Star Trek uniform like she is in this photo. I mean, how cool is she and Samantha is going to be uh, in, with me in the shed like Liz was just now uh, answering your questions about her experience of living in space now like I was saying astronauts get asked a lot of the same questions all of the time so for example I know that one of the most common questions that they get asked and probably you some of you might want to know is how do you go to the toilet in space um, now we're not going to ask Samantha that question because we know she's been answered it loads of times before so we're going to run a little competition we would like you to come up with the most original question for Samantha you are super creative cadets we want to hear the questions that you think Samantha might never have been asked before you can send them to us on the uh, social medias at Unspace Agency or you can email us hello at unspaceagency.earth um, and our favourite question we will let me just get this up we are going to uh, have a prize and the prize will be um, one of these special limited edition answer t-shirts like the one this one that Tim wore when he was actually in space so if you want to win one of these limited edition unlimited space age t-shirts send us your questions um, for Samantha 
that is Samantha there in Spacewell, in the cupola. Um, and yeah, we are really excited about doing that. Um, MJ, I'm thinking that uh, maybe you, you're looking a bit tired. I know you're eight, but maybe you want to go for a little nap. Oh, fine. Well, I'm going to take that as a no. Um, oh, maybe you'd like a biscuit. Yeah, you love a biscuit. Okay, well, why don't you go and get the biscuits and then I'll be in in a minute and I'll put the kettle on. Okay, cool. And we'll have a cup of tea and a biscuit. All right, bye, MJ. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why he has to do that. Um, so, yeah, thank you again to Liz from the Royal Observatory for joining me today. Join us again on Friday at 2 p.m. Uh, for our interview with astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti. Send us all of your questions for her with a chance to win that T-shirt, the most original question. Um, if you do want to know how to go to the toilet in space, um, Samantha actually has answered this question better than most other people, actually. There is a vid brilliant video that she made uh, when she was in space on the International Space Station called uh, When You're in Space, Everybody Can Hear You Poop. <laughs> and um, if uh, we've made a playlist on our channel here. It's called All About Samantha Cristoforetti. One of those videos is that video but there's loads there you can learn about her mission inspire you to maybe come up with a really good question for her so yeah look forward to seeing you on friday tell your friends uh in the meantime stay safe and enjoy learning